Drive Safe. Dave here along with Corey here at BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. And look at that professional microphone you got going on there, Matthew. That's not something you just basically show up to a show with. When you, you know, you're not the normal Zoom call guy, right? Right, right. I mean, obviously, you've got a little bit of professionalism going there. The, the goal is to make sure the sound is the right quality and the, the, the lighting is correct. I want to have a good experience for the audience. That's what I'm all about. Wow. <laughs> wow. You even got kind of a good radio it voice does. going on, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I had to go into video because, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get you know you get what you see and i think it's necessary we uh we show off our attributes hey so let me ask you a quick question matthew what is armchair attorney armchair attorney is the law firm that i started a, uh, re fairly recently i started off by saying what's a domain that i could purchase that isn't being used yet i looked up the word armchair attorney no one had it so i took that domain then i incorporated an llc and eventually got certified by the supreme court of illinois to turn it into a law firm so armchair attorney is the law firm that i am the managing partner of i work with a lot of clients across the country but most of it focuses on illinois and a lot of it focuses on post-employment restrictions restrictive covenants, non-competes, non-solicits, non-disparagements, and non-disclosures. But that's kind of the genesis of Armchair Attorney, and we turned it into a podcast, among other things, and that's kind of what I do with part of my time, but I do a couple other things as well. So, and, and I, you've gotten my, now you've piqued my interest. I got all these cool notes here by you, but now you've started to talking about it, and, and, and let me ask you a quick question. You, first of all, the, the non-compete in the transportation industry, how would these non-competes play a big role in the, what you're dealing with out there in the market? If your audience hasn't been following the story of non-competition agreements, it's time to pay attention. These things are absolutely everywhere. Over 30 million Americans, 18% of the workforce have signed some version of a non-competition agreement. We see them at shippers, we see them at carriers, we see them at brokers. And it prohibits people from doing the thing that they're good at doing for a period of time. Uh, what we find often is the case is people don't negotiate these things. 90% of people, when presented with a non-competition agreement, simply sign it. And that means that they're not able to do the thing that they've been trained to do if they ever leave that company they used to be with. We see people that get sued. We see people that get cease and desist letters because they signed a post-employment restrictive covenant not knowing what it means. And so my goal is to educate people about what these things are and why you should be careful about signing them well i'll tell you so and, and i and i i'm assuming here right off the bat that part of the podcast helps educate us on really knowing what we sign right i mean that, that that's not like a new idea right matthew being being a very understanding of what you put on paper before you let it go i mean right, you, you, right? i mean it's not it's like a check to me anytime you sign something you basically signed um, a blank check, a blank check yeah. for your for your rights, privileges, right? And that what you're saying, and and I can get it. And you said over ninety percent of people, when they're getting a fixing to take a job, they're handed at the last minute a non compete. Said, hey, if you want to work here, you got to sign this piece of paper. Well, so it's about 30 million Americans that have signed these things. But when, they, when they're presented, 90% of people, so when they get presented, they just sign it and don't negotiate it. We are trained as lawyers to help people negotiate and to show them the path of getting out of these things and making sure you get the best possible deal. Some states are getting involved. The feds are getting involved. Steam Logistics, among others, have supported a movement called End Non-Competes. You could go to endnoncompetes.com and learn more about it. But this is part of the thing is edutainment. I want to educate people. I want to entertain people. And I want to tell stories about the supply chain because the thing about supply chain is you can't opt out of it. It's everything. And law is the same sort of thing. You can't opt out of the law. It's always here. It's always pervasive. And the more you know, the better you're going to be to advocate for yourself. So, and, and I, I understand that we've signed it. Are there, are there opportunities? Let's say you go to work for a brokerage company and you've signed a non-compete and let's say y'all part ways, right? Or, or for whatever reason in, in whether you're, let's just say you're fired. Um, how, I mean, there are ways at some point that you can go and battle against these non-competes, right? With 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 help like yours. 
You certainly could, but you're going to be in a place of disadvantage. Um, most courts are going to try to enforce these contracts. They may pull back and say, well, we're only going to enforce it a little bit less restrictive. But if you're let go or you're terminated for cause, that non-compete follows you around. And it just depends on whether the former entity that you used to work for has the desire to mess with your life. And when they do, they send a cease and desist letter to you, the individual. They'll send a cease and desist letter to your new company. And that new company may just say, oh, this looks problematic. We should probably let you go. And so there are ways you can attack these things. Um, Illinois is a good example. In Illinois, if you're making under $75,000, these contracts are illegal. You can't have them. So there is some protections the states are starting to offer. But ultimately, if you sign that document, you have to understand you're probably going to be bound by it. Um, and, and these go by state to state, right? The rules are obviously dependent upon the state, right? There's no federal oversight of this. This is basically on state rules, right, when it comes to these non-competes. <laughs> Yeah, the feds are trying to get involved. There's proposed legislation that have been stalled in committees, but they are still looking to ban them at a federal level, at least for certain income earners. The one thing I didn't talk about is over 30% of these non-competes are with people that are making under $13 an hour. So these are not like just your executive. This is everybody in an organization that is locked out from doing what they're trained to do for a year or 18 months or 24 months. I who makes 13 bucks an hour anymore? I mean, if you're flipping burgers, you still make 22 bucks an hour, right? You know what? I never had to sign one working at McDonald's, but you never know. I mean, it, you, I, it's scary to think that, um, you know, we're worried so much about the competitiveness of what goes on about worried about our competitor that we would restrict an employee from going and even working for a vendor or a competitor or somebody else in the industry. I guess so. Well, let's talk about transportation. Yeah. And you, you speak to it in a non-compete. How is it you could go from, let's say, brokerage over to a shipping company, which is two totally different companies, but because they're within logistics, at the, that could also pull, follow you all the way over to there? Absolutely. I mean, it depends on how the company defines the word business. It could be any type of supply chain or transportation. I signed a non-competition agreement. I had a repair and maintenance company called Outsource Fleet Services. We were performing maintenance and repair all across the country. I was acquired, and as part of that acquisition, I had to have a one-year non-competition agreement. That's what we typically think about for non-competes is selling of a business or executives that have access to confidential, proprietary, strategic information. But these these things are for everybody. Entry-level carrier sales representatives at a brokerage company are signing non-competes. It's absurd. It's unethical. And it's a practice that I like to call out because if we all talk about it, maybe they'll stop using them. Maybe they'll find a better opportunity to find ways to retain their talent as opposed to making them afraid to leave because you might sue them. Is this, I, this obviously you're very passionate about this. Was this... Um, pretty much how you, what made you get started in the podcast? Absolutely. Um, I wanted to explain legal topics because I have so many friends and my LinkedIn box gets filled with people that are struggling with these situations. And most people can't afford a lawyer because we're expensive. And if you're making 40000 or $50,000 a year and you're presented with a contract that says for 18 months after you leave, you're not going to get to do what you're trained to do. Uh, that's one of the things that kind of pushed me into podcasting of talking about these issues, explaining how people people can uh, deal with them and then hopefully educating people and then also telling interesting stories because I love talking to interesting people. You know, I, I, and speaking of interesting people, um, who's Judge Equilina? Ah, oh, I love Judge Rosemary Aquilina. She was one of my professors at Michigan State University College of Law. She's a sitting judge in Ingham County, which is in uh, Michigan. She was the presiding judge over the Larry Nasser trial, which if anyone remembers that trial, it was about a coach who was abusing people in his like, who were under his uh, tutelage. And so I had her as my very first guest because I admire her work. I admire what she's done. She's a fellow mother of twins, so she has twins. I have twins on the way 
And so it was a great opportunity to talk with her. And I took a seven o'clock at night call with her to do it because, you know, she has a full time job. So she had to make available uh, in the after hours. But that's who Judge Aquilina is. She's a phenomenal woman. Everybody who's, whether you're on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever social media platform, you should follow her, learn about what she writes about, and just understand like how the law works. She does in our conversation breaks down criminal indictments and what happens at trials. And it's something that most people never get to experience, but learning from an expert, it's fascinating. Yeah, I, I, I personally, not, not me personally, most people don't, don't, don't know much about indictments, but, but I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying some of us have experienced those um, I, and, and know full well what they mean. Um, let me ask you, what is your favorite part? I, I know you get to talk to people and you get to, you get to talk to these, these guests, but when you're doing it, I have found, and tell me what you think, and, and when you have guests on and you meet people, usually during the conversation, just like right now, it goes off the rails, right? <laughs> I mean, you have an intention, well, you have an intention on what you're going to do, and then all of a sudden the guest says something very interesting, and you, you know, you have, and then you're like, you just want to throw this away because you got a lot going on. You find that to be the case in your podcast? So uh, for me, no, because I don't actually script anything. I have oh, no set go. questions I'm going to ask. Never I want to take that conversation as naturally as we can. I mean, one of the things that gets me passionate is we're, as we talk about safety, right? You guys were on the program just a little bit ago. 20% of commercial vehicles that were inspected during international road check failed. Think about that. Think about the scale of equipment that's on the highway that is not safe to operate. This is why I talk about maintenance so much, and my role with Epica Fleet Services is so important, because we are trying to understand how to make the road safer. And every conversation that I ultimately have, whether they're people in supply chain, or they're people in the law, is how can we mitigate risk? That's what the law is about, is mitigation of risk. And at the end of the day, the more we talk about these things like safety, and if we get derailed talking about other things, um, it's, it's, a, it's an enjoyable experience. So I love all of it. I love to see how it goes. The improv aspect of it is phenomenal. That's why we do them live too. We do them live, we have no script, and we just see what happens. You know, and, and as you talk about safety and as we, we're continuing, we got Corey here, on. he's with No, no Sale Technologies. His company, and as a, as a guest host, his company comes in. Why don't you tell him a little bit? I, you know, I know you heard a little bit about. So they actually have a device that that blocks in that um, distracted driving. Right. We have a, a no cell tag that goes in the vehicle. We have an app that goes on the on the phone, the driver's phone, and then there's a back end portal that allows the fleet manager to authorize or whitelist the apps that they want to have the driver use while they're driving. When they're when they're when the vehicle's in motion, all the unauthorized apps are physically removed from the phone. So there's, you know. So we're finding, and, and when we start to use technologies, and, I, and here's my question: When we start to use technologies like this to to our to with employees and within companies, it opens up all kinds of cans of worms with it with you guys, right? I mean, you guys are just standing in the wings. I feel like you're right. salivating yeah. over there sometimes <laughs> with some of the decisions that we make. Look, look, there is very few jobs that are harder than safely delivering freight on time and on time. Agreed, 100%. And figuring out how do you do that? How do you make it easier to do? And making sure we can eliminate distractions is really important. Uh, a technology like no cell makes a lot of sense. Uh, for company provided phones, absolutely. For personal phones, I'm sure that's an interesting conversation for independents or other operators. But at the end of the day, we want to arrive home in the same condition that we left. And that's why safety is non-negotiable. One of the things I was really excited to talk to you guys about today, I'll just segue briefly to it is here at Epica, we just completed an acquisition of an amazing company called Fleet Mobile Maintenance. And what Fleet Mobile Maintenance is, is out there to do is provide on-site services for the repair and maintenance of commercial vehicles. We all know that uptime is important and if you can have someone come to you to do the services, you are eliminating things like non-billable miles and you're giving yourself adequate opportunities for, for more uptime. But when we're trying to understand supply chain, we have to say, is the status quo good enough? Because if it is, I'm very frustrated because it clearly isn't. So finding ways to eliminate distractions for drivers, both for passenger vehicles and for over the road truckers is important. Maintaining equipment adequately is important. And we don't prioritize these things because we ultimately see accidents are on the rise in some cases and maintenance is not in the state we want it to be in. And, and, I, and I'm glad that you, you mentioned that, Matthew. I, I'm here at, here at BCB Live. Um, we believe ultimately that safety is every single person's responsibility. It doesn't matter 
what you do in the industry. I don't care if you sit in the office. I don't care if you sit if you're the if you're the dispatcher. Or if you're here, even in here in production, our job is always to promote safety and find better ways to do this safer. There isn't how many industries do you know that you go out into your workplace and forty four thousand people will be killed in your work environment next year. There aren't any. No. Unless you're on the front lines in the Ukraine, there aren't any. I mean, not in the United States. This is why we should be upset right now. Being a truck driver is one of the most dangerous professions in the country. Top 10 most dangerous jobs you can do. And just as you've shown in the earlier slides, we can't find parking. We can't find bathrooms. We can't retain the talent. Driver shortage, it's a retention issue. The job isn't what it used to be. In 1980, the average compensation was $38,000 for over-the-road truck drivers. Adjusted for inflation, 120 grand. What do they make today? Is it 120 grand? Probably not. So we have to come to grips that the supply chain we have right now is by our deliberate choices. We can change that. We should change that. But we have to be passionate about it. I agree, and, I, and, and, I, and and as we continue to fight for it here, fight for it there, and we continue to talk about it, that is our ultimate goal here on BCB Live, the safest station in the nation, is to promote, find new ways. That's the reason you're here, Matthew, to talk. That's the reason Corey's a guest host in here. We're trying to promote and educate everyone out there that there are better ways to do it. And it, it, it takes all of us. And I, 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 employ, I just, first of all, thank you very much for what you do in that regard, in, in educating and and also having that passion for safety. I, I appreciate it a lot. Um, what what kind, and I know, and I and I don't, I want to make sure that I get out of here. We only have like one or two more minutes. How is it that people can reach out to you, whether it be in, in this industry or listen to you on your podcast? Yeah, well, I appreciate, well, I appreciate that. that. You can find me on LinkedIn, Matthew Leffler. You can look up armchairattorney.com. You can find me there. I have a the Twitter account. It's Armchair Addy, A T T Y Y, because A T T Y is the abbreviation for the word attorney. I'm also on TikTok. I don't do it while driving. Obviously, that's not a good solution, but I do have at least 50 followers, so it's got to be catching on. And then the podcast, you can find Armchair Attorney on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. And we're continuing to have a great conversation. Tomorrow, my show is with Sarah Barnes Humphrey from Let's Talk Supply Chain. That'll be phenomenal. But that's uh, how you can find out more about me. And then Epica Fleet Services, epicafleet.com. You can find all the solutions you need for repair and maintenance in the United States. How often does your podcast uh, go on, uh, Matthew, and, and when? That's a great question. Uh, it is usually once a week. And I'll tell you, everyone who's ever given me advice says, Matt, you have to be consistent. And I say, no, I, I do what I feel like. So sometimes there's one a week. Sometimes there's three. I don't know. Uh, my most popular podcast right now is me reciting the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. So it's not even supply chain or law related. So, yeah, once a week typically. All right. Sounds like fun. I can't wait to get it. I, I love Poe, and uh, maybe I'll listen to it. I'll listen to you read it to me. I, I mean, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. But I can't wait, and I hope everybody gets out there. Hey, before you go, Matthew, I, I got to have you do something for me. I got to have you say your name, who you're with, and that you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. My name is Matthew Leffler. I am the Director of Business Development for Epica Fleet Services and the Armchair Attorney. And you are watching BCB Live, the safest uh, station in the country. Is that right? Can I say it right? Safest station in the, in the nation. nation. The safest station in the nation. We can fix that in post-production. That's right. We can actually, we're editing that now. You know, that's the fun thing about live. You have a hard time editing it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matthew. Because I can't edit it. Yeah. Hey, hey, thanks, Matt. Hey, thanks for coming on. You know what? I, we're going to have you back here pretty soon. We're going to call you back. We're going to come up with a couple of things and, and maybe a couple of problems I'd like you to solve. How about next time? I'd love to. Let's talk about nuclear verdicts. I'm very passionate about those. Oh, we are too. Uh, we are ready. And you know, we're doing pretty good down here in Texas with tort reform. Yep. I don't know That's if you've right. heard. We're doing a little bit of change. We're making a few changes. But uh, okay, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, Matt? Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.